program is funded in part by the Massachusetts Cultural Council, a state agency which also receives support from the National Endowment for the Arts. Like, I haven't heard that one before. Look, kid, as soon as you realize it's a laundromat and not the local insult line, the happy we're both gonna be. Talk to you tomorrow. Alkali, you better do a good job this time with my laundry. I have a reputation to uphold. I don't need you ruining my fine washables. <laughs> fine washables? Malcolm, the day you come in here with anything beyond 100% polyester is the day I'll come to you for financial advice. Have your fun, Alkali. Just remember to bleach him white this time. Well, if you didn't spend your days chasing ambulances and your nights chasing skirts, perhaps this licentious stink wouldn't be quite so noticeable. I might be insulted if that was coming from anybody but a hippie reject whose life ambition is to destroy the foundation of his chosen career path. Well, I have to do your dirty work for now. And uh, how are you going to pay for that, Malcolm? Cash, credit, or the treasured artifact of your latest client who foolishly trusted you to represent him as his life crumbled into oblivion? You're pathetic, Alkali. You sit there on your stool with your little Mr. Science Junior Edition chemistry set and dole out nonsense. You actually have people fooled into thinking you're something more than a laundry clerk who rifles through people's dirty clothes for a living. You know what you really are? You're nothing but a worthless life waiting for the end of its useful existence. Your sole purpose on this earth is to make sure I stay smelling sweet. And you know what you are, Malcolm? You're nothing but another corporate America drone who makes the most of his money from the sweat and tears of others. Why don't you do yourself a favor? Loosen up that overstarched collar, roll up your sleeves, and do your own damn laundry for once. Why should I? That's what I pay you to do. Just remember to have it done by 6 o'clock, Alkali. Yeah, yeah. Here comes more laundry sets for you to save your words of wisdom, Alkali. Afternoon, folks. How can I help you? Well, hi there. My name is Tim, and this here is my wife, Tina. Hi, we're the Timsons. Pleased to meet you, uh... Larry. My name is Larry. Did you guys say your name was Tim and Tina Timson? Well, why, yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> so, welcome to the sit and spin. How may I be of service? Do you have any nasty grass stains you need to get out? <laughs> no, no, no. Nothing so drastic. We're just simply new to the neighborhood and we decided to stretch the old legs and check out the fine charm of this old town. Mm -hmm. Charm is my middle name. Well, how about that? <laughs> I must apologize for Malcolm, though. He kind of lives in a different world than most of us around here. As for the rest of the people in Cedar Falls, 
I think you'll find that we have our share of characters. <laughs> <laughs> so, Larry, what are you working on? It looks so neat. <laughs> yes. It's my quest to create a product that will revolutionize the Earth's ecological process and save our natural resources. So, yeah, I would say it's pretty neat. Well, that, that sounds exciting, Larry. It will be. What I am trying to invent is a laundry detergent that will not require any water in the cleaning process. Really? You're making a waterless laundry detergent? <laughs> it is the perfect solution to so many of the Earth's growing concerns and maladies, don't you think? Oh, of course. Sure. Once more, water will flow freely across the Earth, free of detergent pollutants, dyes, fragrances. Why should the Earth suffer from the sweaty byproducts of man? We, as citizens of this planet, must continue to work with the Earth to, to preserve it for those who choose to live in its natural glory. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. The first step is to create a laundry detergent that is more environmentally sane of cleaning that which we wear. Naturally. Purely. Uh, wouldn't this cleaner cause you to lose your job? Your oh, job. What do you have? Oh. Well, you see, that's the beauty of this all. I have chosen to trade my job for my spiritual freedom. Oh, see, honey, of course. The, the entire laundry industry is nothing but a ploy by corporate bigwigs to suppress the individuality of a common man. Oh, how dare they? They make these, they make these big machines to pad their big wallets and then pollute our fresh air with their lies and mistruths. Oh, how dare they? This invention will break the bonds that prevent us from enjoying our Mother Earth. Clean it up. Oh, what? oh, 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 don't bother yourself with my mess. Sid! I do this all the time. Sid's the maintenance man here. He gets mad when I try to clean up anything. Claims I never do as good a job as him. Sid! <laughs> I'll spill things so often, Sid just knows when to bring the mop out. Hey, thanks, man. I am a real pain. You're a real pal for putting up with me like this. Don't worry about it, Larry. It's all part of my job. I know, ma'am, but I just, I just hate watching other people clean up my messes. It's all against my basic principles. <laughs> oh, where are my manners today? Sid, I would like for you to meet two newcomers to our fine town in laundromat, Tim and Tina Timpson. They just moved here from, uh, from, uh, where, where did you guys say you were from? Uh, Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota. Right. Minnesota. <laughs> uh, Pleased to meet you, Sid. As Larry said, I'm Tina, and this is my husband. <clears throat> nice to meet you. Uh, I gotta go. I have something in the back I have to attend to. <laughs> sure, man. Hey, thanks again, Sid, for coming to my rescue. Well, Larry, he's, uh, he's most certainly different, isn't he? Who said? Nah, he just likes to keep to himself, that's all. I think you'll find that's one of the charms here at this town and laundromat. We have a wide range of patrons. Everyone different, but all collectively joined in one solitary goal. Clean laundry. In fact, it's why this, the laundry industry is why I've so chosen to attack our environmental pollution as it is. Everyone does laundry. You can't handle the truth. I think you've been watching too many movies, miss. If the phrase fits. Look, why don't you just tell me what you know and I can figure out what I can handle from there, okay? The truth has its consequences, detective. The lies are much more simple to believe and a lot easier to live with, if you know what I mean. Look, why don't I tell you what I know and then you can just fill in the missing pieces. Maybe then you can get some sleep at night. God knows it must be difficult for you now, knowing what you must know. The influence of power and wealth makes most unusual circumstances a little less barbaric. Have you ever been wealthy, detective? I mean, so wealthy that you could light a cigarette with a hundred dollar bill? No, I can't say I've ever been comfortable in the financial department. But that explains a lot about you, detective. Oh, how's that? Is this your family? Yes, it is. 
beautiful, beautiful wife, beautiful kids. It's a picture perfect moment. All that's missing is the family dog. He wasn't allowed in the photographer's studio. Look, miss, this idle chit chat is amusing and all, but it's not helping me in the least bit with the investigation. Now, I know that you're privy to a lot more information than you're letting me know about. So why don't we just avoid all those messy arrest procedures? I'd hate to see those finely manicured nails smudge the fingerprint egg. Where I come from, detective, you keep your head down and your mouth shut. No questions, you see? Once they detect that you know a little more than they think you should, you're silenced. It's as simple as that, detective. No more words. Can I offer you anything? A cigarette or a glass of water? A glass of water would be nice, thank you. You saw nothing, you heard nothing, you ain't gonna see nothing, and if you do, you're gonna be nothing. Thank you, detective. I guess I was more thirsty than I thought. You're welcome, miss. Just trying to help. It's what we're all here for, you know, to help you let us. Why don't you tell me what you know? I'm sorry to waste your time, detective, but I don't have anything to say. I'm an innocent bystander to this whole mess. Why'd you give me that line about lies being easier to live with? Why would you say something like that if you had nothing to hide? I'm tired, detective. If you don't have anything to keep me here, I would like to go home now. Well, unfortunately, miss, I don't have enough evidence to justify bringing you in and booking you. I would, however, like to make your statement legal if you have enough time for that. There's a stenographer waiting outside. If you have nothing to say, this should only take a minute. Fine, let's just get this whole mess over with. Now, of course, for the record, I have to tell you that you're entitled to legal counsel and that it has been offered to you. Until now, you've waived this right. Do you still wish to do so? Yes, of course. I have nothing to hide. Very well, then. With that legality out of the way, let's get right down to business so as not to cause you any more delay. I guess we should start with the night in question. Where were you on the night of October 30th? I was getting ready to have dinner with Mr. Fernando Heath. He asked me out to dinner quite often. I've become a special friend of Mr. Heath, and he likes to take me to the club and show me off. I love going out with Mr. Fernando Heath. Are you sure this is totally undetectable? No traces whatsoever? Yeah, don't worry about it. She'll be singing like a canary and not ever know what came over her. I've waited a long time for this. Now it's payback. Fernando was handing the congressman an envelope. Malcolm! <laughs> Malcolm, back so soon. Did you misplace something? You're conscious, perhaps. Don't mess with me, you freak. Look at my shirt. I have a meeting with an important client in 15 minutes. And my shirt looks like I spent the last three days at Woodstock. Calm down, Malcolm. I just used a bit of my own judgment in this situation and thought you should loosen up a bit. Why? Don't you like it? I could sue you. What would that get me besides a collection of Grateful Dead t-shirts and Beekman's World videotapes? Anyway, I like the fact that in a way you work for me. So I'm going to deduct this from my account and charge this pitiful establishment for the cost of a new shirt. Well, come on, Malcolm. I told you to loosen up the old collar. Hi there. Hello. Hello. You two are new around here, right? I saw you over there talking to Larry. I don't think I've seen you around here before. That's, that's in fact right. I'm, I'm Tim, and this here is my wife, Tina. Name's Mel. Mel Haynes. I know everybody, and I know everything that goes on in this town. So really? if you got any questions, I'm your man. Well, we're just new to the neighborhood, and we just decided to check out the, um, uh, <laughs> sites. Those two have been at each other's throats for years. It all started when Nadia, nah, I really shouldn't know. Oh, well. But if you must know, 
She was engaged to Malcolm, but she got to hate his lifestyle. So one day she came in here to pick up Malcolm's laundry and was attracted to Larry. So she broke off the engagement and moved in with Larry. Then Malcolm and Larry started arguing constantly. Well, Nadia was very upset about this constant arguing, and one day Larry came in here and found a note under one of his beakers from Nadia saying she had to leave. She could no longer stand the war between Malcolm and Larry. Oh. Now, okay. ever since then, Larry has been blaming Malcolm for Nadia leaving, and Malcolm has been blaming Larry for taking Nadia from him. Oh. Well, I guess you wouldn't be interested in any of that. <laughs> Six o'clock, Alkali. Well, Mel, it certainly has been nice meeting you. We'll be heading along now. Sure, my pleasure. See you two around. Yeah, okay. Nice boy. So, what do you think of the place? Well, it's, uh, uh, nice. <laughs> I, I noticed you met Mel over there. Yeah. Don't worry about him. He's perfectly harmless. The reason why he wears that robe is because he likes to do all his laundry at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a little nervous if he came in without the robe. <laughs> Morning, Larry. How are you today, darling? <laughs> Yes, fine, Blanche. As always, a pleasure to see your cheerful face. Oh, Larry, you are such a charmer. <laughs> Tim, Tina, I would like for you to meet one of Cedar Falls' most generous benefactors, Blanche Rhinestone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Blanche is another regular here at the laundromat, so you two will just have to get used to her. Oh, Larry, you are such a taste. <laughs> well, it certainly has been nice meeting all of you. Yes, yeah, thank you. We've only been to the laundromat. Imagine if what the rest of the town must be like, sweetie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I do hope you find Cedar Falls to your liking. <laughs> I know I must sound like the public relations coordinator around here, but I just love it. You won't find a better bunch of people anywhere else. Well, Larry, just stick a sign on my front lawn because I am sold. Cedar Falls is definitely the place for us. Don't you think so, honey? Oh, it's perfect, dear. And we'll definitely have to come back here for all of our laundry needs. Now, let's go check out the rest of the town. Play over, sweetie. All right. Well, Larry, Blanche, Mel, certainly has been nice meeting all of you. Thank you all for your hospitality, and we most surely will be back soon. <laughs> the pleasure was all ours. Meeting nice folks like yourselves is the highlight of my day. I hope we all can become good friends. <laughs> it's perfect, dear. It certainly is, honey. <laughs> well, those two seem like a pleasant enough couple. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's sure good having wholesome, honest young people continuing to populate Cedar Falls. Perhaps Mother Earth will survive this harrowing time of disease, war, and destruction after all. How's the invention coming? Slowly, Blanche. Slowly. What I could use is some of your social status and economic means to underwrite my research. Oh. Oh, Larry, how many times do I have to tell you? My time and my money are already devoted to so many worthy charities as it is. I simply do not have the funding available. Blanche, doing laundry for the needy isn't exactly a monumental sacrifice. I mean, you have your butler do most of the dirty work anyways. And just how do you expect a poor homeless person to go to anywhere the job interview in unwashed and unpressed clothing? Hmm? My contribution is the basis upon which all else is built. Besides, I can't trust Giles to do the laundry by himself. The last time I did that, he put a red towel in with the whites. Can you imagine the poor homeless man that had to go to interview at a construction site in a pink shirt? The man was mortified. No, I must supervise every load as if I were washing it my very self. Then why don't you just wash them yourself? Larry, I ruined my manicure. Oh, God, if I chipped a nail, if I broke a nail doing this laundry, I would have to go all the way across town just to get them fixed. And then I would miss one of my already scheduled charity activities for the afternoon. Now, you wouldn't want me to do that now, would you, Larry? Of course not, but uh, why don't you just do the laundry at home? with your own machines. 
That way, you wouldn't have to go back and forth across town in the first place. Oh, but then I miss conversing with people like you, Larry. It's you and one of all the little people that come under this here laundromat. They just bring me back to that simple and un uncluttered view of life. I miss that, Larry. I just think of my poor homeless friends. I mean, they're happy just to have a clean shirt on their backs. Well, that just must be like a little piece of heaven. Blanche, when are you going to realize that there are no little people? I mean, we are all sisters and brothers living together. You, you have intentions of good, but they're warped by your perceptions. Someday, hopefully, you'll realize the true beauty of the world around you and the true good you have in your heart. Oh, Larry. <laughs> oh, sweet, sinful little Larry. Oh, oh, I do envy you in your little canister set. <laughs> madam? Yes, guys. The rain cycle approaches, madam. We do not want to miss the fabric softener. Come in, guys. No, we can't have our homeless friends have their abrasive undies now, can we? <laughs> here they want something from this place and they will stay until they get it we must keep an eye on them for they are not what they seem there is something very wrong with them very wrong indeed but what can we do they appear to others as innocent friendly the others do not see their true sides the evil side that we see we must keep an eye on them Make sure they do not harm anyone. For that, that will ruin everything we have worked so hard for. Then we will keep close watch. They, they cannot just come in here and, and ruin everything. They will not succeed in destroying us. No!
This program is funded in part by the Massachusetts Cultural Council, a state agency which also receives support from the National Endowment for the Arts.